So hopefully that was an interesting flight from Mumbai to Los Angeles, right over the North Pole. I was looking forward to having a really lovely destination dining meal tonight in Los Angeles, but no plans have changed. Tonight, we have a very special passenger on a return flight back to Australia. So no dining. I'm going to fire up the aircraft again. At the moment, we're being refueled. And hopefully when she comes on board, I'll introduce you to her on the flight deck. So hang in there for another few minutes. So let's do the cold and dark startup. We do that by turning on the battery. I can see that we are connected to ground services. So I'll connect into ground services, which will fire up the uh, various subsystems. Turn some lighting on. First thing I need to do is tell the system where we are. So position, we are at International Airport at Los Angeles. The code is KLAX. Pop that in. The route today is KIX to YMML, Melbourne. And today we are running uh, BA British Airways Flight 1812. And because I've already plotted the uh, our track as a flight plan I can load up the flight plan from the system ALAX to YMML request that flight plan but they weren't kidding about this being a 15 minute walk I don't even think I'm in Tom Bradley anymore that sound that looks like I'm in terminal that one sound is, what the uh, hell? used for the uh, voice recording system to get volume in the cockpit. Right, I'm going to load that up and activate that and execute that. So, we have the base flight plan loaded. Right, the next part of my checklist is to load up payload and fuel, check our zero fuel weight, check our total weight and fuel. Today we are taking 120.8 ton of fuel, 120.8, load that in as a total amount. So we have left wing of 30, right wing of 30 and the centre tank is uh, 60. Feels like right. I'm in a so room. now we can go Spooky. to our performance initiation screen. We're going to accept the flight management computer's assessment. Thrust limit. Uh, wind data uplink is ready, that's good. Climb one, take off, we'll take off with flaps five. That's giving us a rotate speed of 167 knots. Center of gravity. Right, weather forecast uplink is ready, that's great. Okay, I'll make a note of the trim setting of 5.75 Okay So we'll go to the routes page right, Arrivals and departures We are departing today from runway 25 right Depart Runway 25 right, and we 
we're going to take summer two. Summer two. And we're going to execute that. So as you can see on the navigation display, we'll take off from the runway, runway 25 right, and effectively it's just a straight out flight that will be out over the, over the water. Um, our approach into Melbourne, let's go to our arrivals page, will be on runway 16, that's ILS runway 16, and we're going to come in on Lizzie 8. A. So Lizzie 8 Alpha, and we're going to execute on that as well. If I bring up the plan page, the gate is like 15 minutes away the from the international terminal. So change the location. We're going to zoom out. We have yeah. our waypoints from our flight plan listed on our on our flight management computer. There are 11 pages of flight of our waypoints. If I scroll through these, I can see that from Summer to Flicky, there is a link, so I'm just going to connect those two. Uh, next page, next page, I'm looking for discontinuity on the plan. Right, uh, the, the Wollongong, so Wollongong is uh, New South Wales, so we hit land at Wollongong, Brazzy, Tanta, down to Lizzie. Lizzie to Horace, it's in Nefa. Let me just check here. Bell to Ockville. Right, okay, so then we're going to go Lizzie. We've got a discontinuity. I go back to Lizzie. Connect that. So now I should have. It says insufficient fuel, but as we uh, make our way, we'll change our altitude. We'll actually become a little bit more fuel efficient and we'll actually arrive with um, quite a nice amount of fuel left in the tank. So just checking there's no discontinuities, or we still have one. So from Nefa to Belta. So from Nefa to Belta, I'm just going to connect that. Or if we might get vectored on the way in. And now I've got a nice clean path uh, straight down into Melbourne Runway 16. All right, so let's go back to legs. And I'm going to change this to map mode. I've got a route data button on the right hand side. I'm now going to load the wind. So the flight plan also brings into the database the current wind. So request that. I've got the download and I'm going to load that now, execute on that. Now that's loaded into the system. So let's check the pre-flight checklist, inspection and security. So I've done the walk around the aircraft, everything is in perfect condition. I've checked the oxygen mask, instruments all checked fine. Uh, FMC is loaded. I've done the briefing. QNH, we're not running live weather, uh, so we need to go to 1013. So that is set. Auto brakes, we're going to set that to RTO, which is rejected takeoff. Uh, fuel has been set, I can see that on the screen. Thrust has been set. Speeds, let's go back to. So. Uh, V1 160, rotate 167, V2 172. Uh, so I'm going to set my speed to 200. LNAV and VNAV. So uh, once we get off the ground to 400 feet, I can engage autopilot. And LNAV and VNAV will track our path as we leave the terminal area. So that has been checked. Passenger side. to set the window heaters on. We don't want them to fog up on the hydraulics. I'm going to set them all onto auto. It's all fine. Hydraulics is on. Uh, beacon is 
not on yet, we're not ready for pushback. Doors are not closed yet, we're still loading. All right, I'm gonna do a few more checks and we'll come back when everybody is boarded. All right, so on the moving map, we have our flight plan that we've popped in, starting off in Los Angeles, southwesterly track, south of Honolulu, south of Vanuatu and Mia and then down into Australia kind of over Sydney um, and then into Melbourne if I just zoom in here we can see the track there we go and that's kind of the standard Sydney to Melbourne track too so We'll be joining other traffic as we head in. All right, so uh, let's just have a look at the taxi chart. Work out how we're going to get to runway 25 right. Uh, and as we can see on the chart here, that's where we're sitting right now. You can see the little magenta triangle. So we're going to come out onto taxiway Charlie. Um, and then we're going to head all the way down actually on Bravo all the way down to the end here to 25 right um, and then line up on the runway and then take off heading practically due west but not exactly due west all right pop that away and uh, I think we have a special guest that I'm going to just summon up to the flight deck um yeah can we bring up our special traveler for the day please so let me just turn this round hello Hi. come on in <laughs> take a seat oh boy Ooh. and you can take your mask off up in the flight deck <laughs> yourself in so welcome aboard. Hi. So nice to see you in Los <laughs> Angeles. Yes. It's been two years. Almost two, two and a, one and a half. One and a half. Yeah. It seems like two years. Feels like two years. Strange world. Yeah, it's been a very long period of time. Yes. Well, so good to have you. So good to take you back home. And what I'm going to do now is just get the last bit of our checklist underway, and then we'll push back. And if you like, you can stay or you can head back to your seat. Let's and you can it. have a sleep. And I'm going to start the first engine, left engine start. Give it some fuel. Do you recognize this? It's the old Tom Bradley terminal. Ah, that's why it looks so different. <laughs> Right, engine, the right engine out, we'll get that started. Give it some fuel. Um, and can you do those two red orange buttons at the top? Yep, that one. And go. Right, the 
check the flight controls. So check the ailerons, elevators, the rudder. That all works fine. Transponder, load sheet done, flap set to five. Vital data done, trim. Oh, trim. I wrote that down so I wouldn't forget. Trim is set for 5.75. Flight control, trim five point. Oh, wrong way. Five point. That'll do, six eight, it's close enough. Yes, it's close enough. Uh, it is, it is. Cabin okay. report, exterior lights. Excellent. So, let's do this. And exterior lights. All exterior lights are on. All right, now we can taxi down to the runway. I just moved. Oh, let's go. It's me, Mario. Last time you were in a takeoff with me. Last time I was here. Really? Wow. That's a long time ago. Turn left onto Bravo. This is a taxiway. Oh, look, there's a familiar. What is that a restaurant still? Let's just turn this around and show everybody. Is that ever a restaurant? I think so. I think it was a restaurant. No, that's the air traffic control tower. But that domey thing with the blue thing. Oh, I don't know. from Mumbai to LA was 17 hours. Oh. Straight over the North Pole. And you can watch that on my YouTube channel. I could. You are correct? Yeah. Which is Aussie Sim Guy for those who are watching right now. You should know that anyway, otherwise how else would you have found this video? Magic of the algorithm. It is, isn't it? Yeah, 
here is to line up and wait. There it's Clarence. Roger, Roger. Over, over. We have a Victor, Victor. Runway okay. two five right. Strobe's on. Strobe. Just gonna wait here for a moment. Okay, checklist complete. Auto throttles armed. Ready to go? Always. Let's go. Let's head to up, home. Up and away. Bye, LA. Adios, muchachos. Do you recognize anything out there? Uh, well, I mean, I can see Hollywood and Century City. Yeah. I don't know Santa Monica very well. And um, Santa Barbara's out that way, isn't it? Yeah, so that's on Malibu on the coast. And then Santa Barbara's a little further. A little bit further around. Right. So, I'm going to turn off the APU, do the after takeoff checklist. Uh, and below 12,000, below 12,000. Pop that in. Alright. bit of a right hand turn in just a moment. Although we're going to go through cloud first. I think we might have to bump you up to first class. <laughs> That's thousand oaks. This what? Thousand oaks. Yeah? Not to be confused with Sherman Oaks where I used to live. But they're in the valley, right? Yeah, it's kind of like on the edge of the valley. I think Thousand Oaks, you're really starting to get into Ventura County. Uh huh. Because um, Simi Valley is part of Ventura County. Thousand Oaks and Simi Valley are kind of the same area, one's just more north of the other. Okay. So I think Thousand Oaks is part of Ventura County. There we go, we see the coastline out there. Might be that true. Lakes? They're under the clouds now, but there's some lakes just down there. I've been camping in kind of like the Ventura County area. Uh huh. Where the lakes and the mountains are. Pretty place? It was really nice, yeah. It was on top of a hill. I don't remember the name of it, but uh, it, it was really nice. It was a cool place. It was a cool area. Very wooded. There was no cell service. No cell service? <laughs> so you were alone? Uh, no, I'm with friends. No, that's what I meant though. You were still, you know, cut off from civilization. Oh, yeah. 
I think when I go camping, it's like 50% of the time I have cell service and 50% of the time I don't. Hmm. Alright, so we're just waiting to cross this waypoint in three miles at dark. Oh yeah, it's a little out in here. Oh, I'll do that. Uh, okay, below, get rid of dark. Okay, and then we can climb to our cruise of 30,000 feet. After takeoff checklist complete. Is it that far around? Yeah, because you hit Ventura County first. Santa Barbara's like a two hour drive north. An hour and a half. I guess it depends on traffic. Well, it only took us four minutes to get here. I think we're going a bit faster than traffic. Yes. Alright, we're going to do a left hand turn. Uh, let's make this 30,000. And commit that. And now we'll start to climb. And in one minute we're going to do a left hand turn where we'll say goodbye to America. Goodbye. And next time we land we'll be in Australia. Woohoo. Family time for two weeks. Woohoo. Woohoo. It's been too long. <laughs> been very too long. Well, been island very... is that? <laughs> And this will be the conclusion of the destination dining uh, project. See, we had not even Ventura. I think we hit Ventura. I think we passed that bit. Well, that'll be... Well, it's kind of behind us now. Yeah. That's kind of where we are. Kevin? Yeah, go watch a movie on my on my screen. <laughs> okay. Eat some airplane food. Oh take well. A nap. In first class, they will feed you well. Ah, that's very exciting. Exactly. Will they have Taco Bell? No, they'll have hopefully nicer food than Taco Bell. Taco Bell is top tier level food. For airplanes? Yeah. Well, that would be a good idea. So British Airways should do a deal with Taco Bell. They should. And then you can have Taco Bell on the flight. And that grilled cheese burrito. Ooh, baby. <laughs> it's delicious. That's good. Alrighty. Well. All right. Well, thank, thank you, Captain. Thank you for I'll joining me on the flight. i on eh? arrival. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Down on the right-hand side, outside. Yeah, down there. Oh, yes. Okay. Thanks. Have a safe flight. Bye, lol. As the clock shows, we departed Los Angeles 10 hours and 46 minutes ago. And we are currently over the Fijian Islands. Unfortunately, it's a bit cloudy outside. There's not a lot we can see. Nothing to see out there. Uh, but what I can check is our fuel status and at the moment we've depleted the fuel in the center tank and we're now working off the two wing tanks there's 32 tons of fuel left to go and we've got just under five hours to go um, but if I check the progress page we'll see that we're predicting that we won't have enough fuel to get to Melbourne um, 
which I've found often the case with my long haul flights. And so what I've done to compensate for that is I've changed the flight level. Currently we're at 30,000 feet. Uh, and the flight management computer is recommending a, an ascent to 39,000 feet. So by ascending to 39,000 feet, we should become a little bit more efficient in our fuel usage and we should land um, with fuel to spare. So to do that, I'm going to change the altitude cruise from flight level 300 to 390 and now it's giving me an estimation of 0.8 of a ton of fuel which is what we wanted so now what's happening is by doing that the aircraft is now automatically ascending to flight level 390 and uh, the engines are revving up a little bit you see they're moving up 937 94 and we will climb to flight level 390 and just to match that I'm going to make this 390 and we can see that we'll intercept that at that new top of climb marker on the nav screen and that's going to happen around 35 miles from where we are now we should put us just past Nandy I oh, know just before Nandy I oh, hope that made sense We left Los Angeles 13 hours ago and as you can see outside it's starting to get light with the sunrise coming up behind us. Our next waypoint is a waypoint called Umblin, about 35 miles away from it and we'll be there in a few minutes. Waypoints sometimes have a significance in terms of your path. Uh, on the moving map you'll see where we are. On face value it doesn't seem like there's anything significant about Umblin, which is right there. If I change the display from map to high-end high on route, we will see that Umblin is actually on a border. So the right-hand side of Umblin is controlled airspace out of Nandi in Fiji and the airspace on the left of Umblin is controlled airspace through Brisbane. Australia is split into two parts, a northern and a southern half and we can see the green line come through here which separates uh, Brisbane from Melbourne control space and so we'll move into this area uh, around here managed by Brisbane when we get to Wollongong, we'll cross into Melbourne controlled airspace and then it'll take us down to land in Melbourne. And just as we cross Umblin, I'll make a radio call to Brisbane Centre, letting them know where we are and uh, they can then track us as we continue to get closer to Australia. Brisbane Centre, Speedbird 1812, uh, passing Umblin, flight level 390. I descend, flight level 370, Speedbird 1812. All right, so we've been directed to descend 2,000 feet. I'm going to set that on the altitude select window, commit that, and we will start to descend. But 
let me see if I can better help you understand how control air spaces work. You can see the map here. If I change the display to high en route, we can see the various tracks that uh, planes navigate around the world. But you can also see the green lines, which show the borders of different control airspace. If I click on the ocean in the area we are, uh, we can see that it's under the control of the Brisbane Melbourne Oceanic Control and it's Brisbane and Melbourne because if you're in the northern half you're under the control of Brisbane if you're in the southern half you're under the control of Melbourne if I then click on the Australian part we can see that that area is called continental Australia and that's the control airspace for when you're flying over land or, or very close to the to the coastline if I move the map across to the east a little bit and I tap on this area we can see that that part of the airspace is controlled by Auckland and if I tap above Auckland we can see that's controlled by Nandy in Fiji and if I zoom way out Hopefully you can see all the various green lines that show us different air spaces. So if I tap over this area there, Oakland. So Oakland is covered out of Oakland in the United States. And in fact, they have a very broad area of coverage. In fact, right across to um, uh, nearly to Asia. And as we get closer into Australia and we get to this waypoint, waypoint called Rickney, uh, we'll then radio uh, Brisbane and then let them know we're passing into um, Melbourne Centre. So even though we're an hour out and it's far too early to do the approach checklist and the briefing, I'm going to do that now anyway. While I've got some time, and I don't have to concentrate on flying. So down the bottom of my pad I've got three charts. The first chart shows us uh, the arrival. We call it the arrival. Now our flight plan has included the Lizzie 8A arrival and we're going to take this northern path across. I'll just zoom across. Um, across to Belta. We'll do a left hand turn and then line up with the runway and land. This chart gives us some very key information that we have to be mindful of. Uh, the first key one, because it's in red, is that if we drop below 10,000 feet, we can't exceed 250 knots. These different paths also show us some key information, such as the altitude at each waypoint, and so we have to be mindful of that. The second chart that I want to bring up is that once we turn left from Delta, sorry, from Belta, and we head into the runway, uh, there's some key information that we need to be mindful of here too. So we'll be coming down from Belta on a course of 160 to the airport. We're going to do an ILS approach. Uh, I've got some information here that shows us uh, the various altitudes that we need to be to intercept the glide slope and you'll see that we should be maintaining 3,000 feet we'll cross Belta and then we'll intercept the glide slope and we can see here that that intercept happens at 8.1 uh, nautical miles so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to program that into the flight management computer so it'll come up on the navigation display to do that I go to the fixes page And I key in ML for Melbourne. There's a few that is being offered. The one at the top will always be the closest one to where we're heading. So I'll select that one. And the information on the pad showed me a course of 160 at 8.1 knots. Uh, 8.1 nautical miles. And so what I need to do is key that in. So a bearing of 160, 
160 slash 8.1 pop that in and the flight management computer has just worked out that our ETA will be 2017 Zulu and there's 750 nautical miles to go what will happen is up on this display here as we uh, get closer to Melbourne we'll see that there'll be a green ring around Melbourne at the 8.1 mark and that'll give us that point in the air where we'll intercept the glide slope at 3,000 feet and that effectively approximates um, a circle around there and then once we do land I'll bring up the third chart right airport information map so now we can see the runways and the taxi and the terminal area so we'll be coming in from the north uh, runway 16 will be pretty light when we land. We'll only have uh, one point, no, 2.3 tonne of fuel left. We should be able to easily slow down and take that high speed exit at, uh, at Golf. We'll then turn left onto Taxiway Alpha, turn right onto Taxiway Tango and pull into gate D9, which is just that key one there. At, can't really see it on this map. Um, at the International Terminal. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if not, just rewind this and watch it again. There's Botany Bay in Sydney. We can just make out, let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. Botany Bay with Sydney Airport. And uh, the Australian coastline coming up to Hooks, the waypoint I talked about earlier. Then we'll do a left hand turn over Wollongong, across Razzie, near Canberra, and then down to Melbourne. There's Sydney again. On the nav screen we can see Lizzie towards the top there which is where we transition to the final stage of our flight which is uh, the approach and arrival. We're about six minutes out from the next waypoint which is NABA. NABA happens to be the top of our descent and just prior to NABA I'll start to configure the aircraft for its arrival. Um, NABA just happens to be uh, just before Bright. So it gives you a sense of where we are over Victoria. Still pretty hazy out there. It's coming up to 6 a.m. local time. So let's bring up the checklist. So checklist button. That brings up our descent checklist. Uh, recall and notes okay that's clear the briefing we did the briefing earlier when we were out over the Pacific uh, no except for the missed approach okay if we have to do a missed approach instructions say track 160 climb to 4,000 feet or as directed by ATC and then uh, we'll do a circuit get vectored back onto 160 and hopefully um, we'll be successful with a second landing hopefully we won't have to do that anyway all right, briefing is complete. Uh, VREF, this is where we will tell the system that our landing speed will be 127 plus 5, 132 knots at flaps 30. So that is done. Minima, let's set the minima. Uh, and minima we said was 482 closest is 490 I think it's 480 so I'll make it 480 480 
So, so minimum set for 480. I can now tick that off. Our auto brake, we're going to do auto brake select two. That's done. Approach, okay, we're not in the approach phase yet. So, descent checklist complete. And we're actually now starting to descend. We passed that top of descent point. And we can see the uh, green arc there, which shows us we're on the flight plan. We will intercept flight level 291. Coming up on Lizzie, getting close to Melbourne. And then we're gonna to transition to the other map. I'll do that now. And we'll appear on the map in a moment. So we're turning on to Lizzie. Here we are on the map. Heading off to Horace. We have to be 9,000 or uh, or below at Horace. Currently 11,000. Next waypoint is Nefa, 6,000. I'm going to set us up for Belter, which is 3,000. Just going to give us a bit of speed brake, just to slow us down. We go. A little bit of a left hand turn at Nefa. Right. Right, so we've got our ILS frequencies that are tracking the localizers. We need to get down to 3,000 feet. Comes the left turn. Activate localizer. And all things being equal, when we cross the green line at 3,000 feet altitude, we should intercept the glide slope exactly where we need to. And dead ahead is the airport, runway 16, slowing us down to 155. Speed brake is armed. Flaps five. Flaps 15. Gear down. And a match flaps 15. Cabin report is received, the cabin is ready for landing. Gonna slow down glide slope. Intercept the glide slope. I was a little late. So we'll have to pick up the glide slope now. Reducing speed to 132. Flaps 20. Flaps 25. Right, flaps 30. Flaps set for 30. We are configured for landing. The 
approach us quickly, you can see us on approach. One, six. Disengaging autopilot at 1,000 feet. Approaching minimums. Approaching minimums. I have control. Minimums. Continue. Okay, leaving the runway on the taxiway Golf. Three brakes reset, flaps to zero, turning the APU on.
So we've got ground power, connecting ground power, shutting down the left engine, and shutting down the APU. All right. So the doors are now opening. Welcome to Melbourne. Melbourne.